that's the full length of the samples. That's one, two, three, four means one measure. That's four beats, four yep. quarter notes. Yeah, if, if we're recording, if we're referring the quarter notes to the beat. Exactly. And that's what we're doing right here. As you can see, I have selected quarter notes. I can also select a few different options there. There's like sixteenths, eighth notes, you know, but all different most, ones. The most simplest form is quarter notes. That way you can measure by one, two, three, four. That's that one measure. Yeah. Using the other ones would be if you had a sample that's less than one bar. Exactly. All right. So we're going to say it has, we're using quarter notes, four beats, and as you can see up here, it gave us our tempo. Exactly, which is 96.09. That's right. Got it. Okay. We got a few other parameters here that we can change on our sample. It's our level, huh? Oh, I see. We turn the jog wheel down, the value lowers, and the level actually gets lower. Yep. Got it. What's the next one over there? We have velocity control. So right now, when we hit the pad, it's playing at one solid level. Yeah, I'm tapping it softly. It's still hit the same level. Now, if I turn this on... Ooh. Oh, I see. If I hit hard, it comes on. Hit it soft. It plays soft. Oh, I see, so it's the velocity level controls the amount of volume that comes out of that particular sample. Yep. Got it. All right, we're going to turn that off. We want it to play the same level whenever we hit it. Agreed. All right, then we got, of course, our course tune, fine tune. Oh, let's see that course. Oh, yeah. Ooh, rap, rap, rap. Wow, that's fast. Yeah, baby. There you go. That's a slow enough beat for me. And we got, of course, the, oh, the fine tuning of the actual pitch. That, nice. That just does a little bit by little bit. Yeah, to help you get the perfect pitch you actually want. What's that, the reverse do? Wow, this is pretty cool. Instantaneous. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hit it. Me All and right. my dogs. I like that. Cool. Now, this next function is pretty important. It's called BPM Sync. What this allows you to do is once you record your sample to an audio track, which we're going to show you how to do here in just a minute, when you change the tempo, your sample is actually going to change with your tempo. Uh -huh. Meaning, if we're set at, like we have up here, 96.09, and I decide to change that later on to 120 beats per minute, right. the drums will still stay in tempo. Mm. It's really cool. What about the buttons here on the bottom? Okay, basically say we have this drum loop on our first pad. Right. If we wanted to change that to a different sample that we have already loaded into right. memory, we can hit F1 for the sample list. And as you can see, those oh. are our different samples there that we've already loaded into our machine. And we can actually pick a different sample to load into our audio phrase. And you, you preview it by pressing F4. Oh, I see. Like some different road sounds we can win there. Let's just keep our drum drums. Our preview. For now. A guy and drums right there. Okay, let's keep it in. How do you keep it? You just hit select, which Got is it. F5. Cool. All right. And next to that, we have length lock. What this does is it puts a lock on your start and your end point so that nobody will change it and it'll change, you know, halfway yeah, through. Yeah, mess your whole track up. Yep. And then we have chop. Now, chop is an advanced function. We'll have to show you another time. Maybe check it out on our next level video. That's our next level video. All right. And last but not least, we have F5, which is command. I'll press command here, and it gives us four options. We have emphasis, normalize, time stretch, and truncate. Got it. Now, these are your basic functions. You emphasize adds highs. Check, check your book out for more info. Normalize, as we said before, will make your entire sample louder. Time stretch, we can change the timing. Truncate will cut off those extra edges that we don't need if we further edit it. Exactly. All right. So why don't we go back to our sequence edit, and we're going to put this into our sequence. Let's take this drum beat and the guitar we got, and then I'll play some keyboards. Sounds good. Now, remember, if you want to be able to change the tempo later on and have your drums match, this is very important. We need to, first of all, turn our BPM sync on before recording our audio track. Got it. Okay? And we also need to do, what we have to do, is go to sequence and change our tempo right away to... 96.09. Exactly. Because that way 
we can actually start to change the tempo. It's important because the rolling suggests this is the way they work the machine. Exactly. Now when we record, we know that we'll have the exact right tempo for our drums. Yeah. Cool. And I changed the tempo actually just by pressing BPM tap next located next to the transport. And as you can see, I just dialed it in, hit the exit button, and we have our new tempo. Good. Why don't we start up our new hip hop track? Let's start up. Let's get busy.